What is up, home care owners and enthusiasts? This is Lucas Carroll with the Business of Senior Care, where we help home care companies get their state license fast and with excellence. So today we're going to talk about the state of Oregon and what it takes to get through the process with the Oregon Health Authority to get your home care license. Um, Oregon has a couple of wrinkles, uh, unique nuances that uh, make the application process a little bit special for Oregon. So we're going to walk through that. Uh, we will come back to this. This is just a, a visual of the application form, uh, but first we're going to start on the overall visual for the application process. Um, so this this process here just gives you from beginning to end what it takes to uh, get your home care license in Oregon, and we'll zoom in. Uh, overall, it takes about three to four months, uh, depending on the accuracy of your application. And here are the major steps, starting with the left on picking your license type, and then finalizing your governing body, preparing, number three is preparing and submitting your application, number four, your policies and procedures, and then last is completing your on-site survey. So starting over here on the left-hand side is the license type. So in Oregon, there are actually four choices when it comes to license type and all of those in the typical non-medical home care arena. And so there's more choices than just getting a home care license. There are actually four different types of licenses that you can get. And those are titled the limited, basic, intermediate, and comprehensive. Um, so these are four different license types and you just uh, indicate on the application what license type that you want. And there are a couple of uh, major differences which we'll get into for each. But just at the top there, as you can see, out of the four license types, there are a total of 164 agencies who are licensed with the state of Oregon. And of those, 142 have the comprehensive license. So the vast majority of home care companies in, in this license type pick comprehensive. Um, so if that gives you any perspective as far as what the majority of home care companies do. Uh, so if we, if we jump in and look at the first one, which is a limited, that's the most basic type of um, license that you can obtain. If you have a limited license, you can do personal care and then you can provide medication reminders. Uh, we're gonna look at the difference between medication reminding, medication assistance, and medication administration here in just a minute. But those are the two types of service categories and there's no registered nurse that is required um, if you have this license type. And the fee is $2,000. For basic, this basic license type you provide can provide personal care, medication reminders, medication assistance. And for basic, no nurse is required for this one either. And the application fee is $2250. Okay, intermediate is personal care, med reminders, med assistance, med administration. And for this license type, a registered nurse is required as part of the application and for running your agency and the fee is 2,500 bucks. The last and most popular service type is comprehensive. So in this license, you can do personal care, medication reminding, medication assistance, medication administration, and you can provide nursing services. And so a registered nurse is required and it's a $3,000 app fee. So to look at the different types between medications, let's go over here to the middle column in blue. Just to give you a general idea, there are more specifics, but medication reminding is for audio, visual, or an oral reminder for a client to take medications. That's when the client can self-direct. So if the client's able to self-direct the medication, um, then the caregiver can provide them a reminder. And this category type starts um, in all the way back in limited. So when we move into medication assistance, that starts with your basic license and intermediate and comprehensive. In medication assistance, the client is able to self-direct um, and the caregiver is helping with one or more steps in the process of taking medication. So that would be like opening a container, grabbing a container uh, of medication or something like that. If the client's still able to self-direct and then the caregiver has one or more steps in the process, that's medication assistance. And then last, medication administration, which applies to uh, intermediate 
and comprehensive. That's when the individual is actually administering the medications to the client um, or supervising the client for a client who is not able to self-direct. So if the client's not able to self-direct, then in this medication administration, the employee would be doing the administration. So those are the three different license types. Uh, very critical to determine which license type that your agency would like. As we look at column number two, which is your governing body. So here we're um, ensuring that you have all of the appropriate individuals that you need to apply. The administrator is the primary person in the company. So the administrator, of course, sees, oversees the day-to-day -day operations for the entire agency. Also, you have to have an administrator designee in place. So somebody who can be there in absence of the administrator. And then for the uh, intermediate and comprehensive, you have to have that registered nurse. And each of those individuals have to be able to pass a background check. For administrator qualifications, they can be a licensed independent uh, provider or practitioner, sorry, licensed independent practitioner, registered nurse, LPN, physician assistant, or pharmacist. If we don't have one of those qualifications, you can have a high school diploma and two years of professional or management experience in a health-related field. And an important point here is in um, uh, April of 23, the health department put out notification about clarification on a qualified individual. You have to have a qualified individual with your agency and they're working on uh, accepting applications for what it what it means to become a qualified individual so that can be a person or an entity who is taking an approved training program and the approval comes from the uh, authority the department and that approval is for training for caregivers or medication training so again an individual or an entity can become approved a qualified individual but they're going through the process of um, who can be approved to provide this training and uh, who are approved companies that can uh, help out to uh, provide this training to, to assist to become a qualified individual. Prepare and submit the application. So in the state of Oregon, you're submitting the application, you're printing everything out and mailing it off. You can operate out of your home or into a business. You formed your business entity, an LLC or an S Corp. You have your own private office for your files, and then you have a training space. You have your company name, an address, phone, website. And so you submit your application, and then along with your application, you're submitting a couple of policies, which are organizational operations, your disclosure policy, and then your service plan or care plan. Um, you're restricted to a 60 mile service area for your um, organization. And then we did review our different types of a medic medication. Step number four is your policies and procedures. So you need to have your PNPs ready to go for survey. And here are the major components of your policies and procedures. They include administrative operations, personnel operations, pre-employment screening, client notifications, management of client records, infection control, emergency response, medication reminding and assistance depending on your license type, nursing services depending on your license type, and then your QAPI program. For your caregivers, they need eight hours of initial training and then four hours of training for medication services and six hours of ongoing annual training. The last step in the process is completing that on-site survey. So here you are ready and prepared with your policies and procedures and your office for the uh, authority to come in and provide an on-site survey. And at that on-site survey, they cover a couple of things, including interviewing clients, client family members, staff, and management. They do on-site observations of clients and staff performance. They review documents and records, and then they review client audits. Um, so they are required during the initial survey uh, to notify no less than 20, 72 hours, excuse me, prior to the survey date to notify you of that. And you have your initial survey and then you get resurveyed once every two years. 
And at the end of the survey, they have what's called an exit survey where they provide you your, with your preliminary findings and they give you a reasonable opportunity to submit additional documentation. After that, if all of that's successful for the on-site survey, then you are issued your license um, to operate your in-home care agency under your specific license type. So that's a general overview of what the licensure process looks like. If yourself or if you know somebody who's looking to engage in the process and would like an expert in licensure uh, to help with the application, policies and procedures, and just get you prepared for the on-site survey, uh, reach out to us and book a call. Thanks, everybody.